Hello, and welcome back to Workbench Wednesdays. In this episode, we're going to be talking about... Oh, come on! Okay, what was I talking about? Oh, right. In this episode, we're going to talk about circuit... Br Seriously? Okay, this is getting ridiculous. I need some kind of defense against these circuit problems. You know, like a circuit breaker. This one is the power defense from Eaton. And no, this doesn't look like one you would have in your home. Even though you may not need to purchase one of these, you are affected by them every single day. For example, there is probably a data center between you and me that's using them right now. So in this episode, we'll talk about why the power defense is so cool, but first, I want to talk about how all circuit breakers work. Whether you're talking about the breakers in your home or the ones used in commercial settings, they all contain the same primary components. Core of a breaker are the movable contacts. While closed, current passes through them, and when they open, current stops. And how do we get those contacts to be pulled apart? There is an operating mechanism that does the actual separation. One way to activate it is with an external lever. Another is with the trip unit inside of the breaker. The trip unit determines if a fault occurred. They can detect a short or overload condition. Historically, circuit breakers had a thermomagnetic trip unit. And to be clear, the ones in your home probably still do. There are two different mechanisms to detect the two types of faults. The first is a fused piece of bimetal that heats up with current flow. If there is too much current, then it gets hot and bends enough to activate the operating mechanism. This detects an overload. For short circuits, there is a magnetic coil with a plunger. When the coil sees too much current, it pops the plunger. For me, this was the big aha moment with circuit breakers. There are basically three ways to break the contacts. Those two plus the physical handle. Now, newer circuit breakers use electronic trip units, which can detect those two faults, plus quite a bit more, but more on that later. Last, the most visible part of a circuit breaker is the frame. The majority of the frame is plastic and makes up the physical body. It protects the components and provides some voltage isolation. The breakers you have at home are called miniature, and the ones like the power defense are called molded case circuit breakers or MCCBs. There's also an air insulated type that is used in very high voltage applications. But here's the thing. All of these breakers have the same basic mechanisms. They may look different on the outside, but all of the parts are there. Now that we've covered the basics of the circuit breakers, let's talk specifically about the ones found in commercial locations like this one. These are Eaton's globally certified molded case circuit breakers. Their current protection capability ranges all the way from 15 up to 2,500 amps. The key feature we're going to focus on is the PXR or electronic trip unit. So to help with that, I have an awesome guest. Andy, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? All right. Uh, so my name is Andy Smith. I work for Eaton Corporation. Uh, my official title is product integration engineer uh, for Eaton's molded case circuit breaker team. Uh, so I sit in, in the Pittsburgh office. Um, right now, I'm a little bit north of Pittsburgh. I'm actually in our Power Systems Experience Center. Okay. And what is that? Uh, we joke, we call it the Disney World uh, of, of Eaton. Basically, everything that we make here, um, we have the ability to, to bring people in and, and demo what we can do. Uh, we can show power quality. Uh, we, we train industrial maintenance workers here. Um, we have a, a live data center that we can walk through and point things out. We do a ton of training here. It's really a great resource. Um, whether you're a customer or a student or just somebody who wants to learn more about uh, what Eaton makes and how electricity works, uh, this is a really awesome place to check out. Oh, that, that does sound awesome, man. I hope that when travel gets back to normal, I can come and visit yeah. it sometime. Now, just a quick note, Andy did help me put together the initial part on circuit breakers. In that section, I skipped right over what an electronic trip unit was. So, Andy, what is an electronic trip unit? Uh, again, that trip unit is the brains of your circuit breaker. The thermomagnetic has those physical attributes. It has the bimetal strip, it has the, the magnetic coil that are going to protect your system. An electronic trip unit pretty much does the same thing, but instead of needing those internal components, um, it has a, a printed circuit board inside the trip unit 
And so picture a computer that's, that's doing all these measurements and telling you what actions to take. Okay, so if I summarize and said that sensor and speed were the physical differences, what about capabilities with an electronic trip unit? Um, and the big difference is electronic trip units are adjustable. Um, so where you might buy a thermomagnetic trip unit that it's set to these specific parameters and it's going to trip the breaker when those happen. Uh, mm -hmm. If you use an electronic trip unit, you have the choice of, um, hey, what sort of overload condition do I want the breaker to trip on? So to me, this actually sounds like, say, in an office environment, I could see how it'd be really helpful to have programmable trip units because as you reconfigure the office over time, you could change the configuration of the circuits in the office. Would you call that a fair example? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So if, if a lot of people, if they know that they're going to be doing expansion, um, they might oversize their breakers. So maybe I know my load right now is 400 amps, but I'm going to go ahead and buy a 600 amp breaker, knowing that in the future, if I need to pull more current, I can turn it up. Okay, so changing a limit on the order of hundreds of amps is not something I thought of before. Um, what other benefits might there be using something like PXR since it has sensors? I suspect it has more than just programmability. The big game changer with power defense right now is that we can actually do metering within the breaker. Um, so it has uh, Rogowski coils or CTs inside the trip unit, depending on which size you're using. Uh, real quick, two things we just mentioned. A CT is a current transformer. It's basically a coil that you put around a ferrite core, and then you stick a wire through that. Now that wire will generate a current on the CT, which is smaller than the original current. That way you can easily measure it. A Rogowski coil is the same idea, except that it outputs a voltage instead of a current. So the exciting thing about these new PXR trip units is that they can do metering just within the trip unit. So I don't need my external CTs anymore. I don't need that external meter. I can start metering the load just with a breaker. Okay, now that we've got data we can monitor, how do we actually get to it? Correct. Yes, yeah, so obviously you're, you're grabbing all this great metering data. You want to be able to do something with it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so we have multiple communication options. Um, the, the main option that we use coming right out of the trip unit is Modbus RTU. Uh, we have a couple different components that can help the breaker speak other languages like Modbus TCP or Profibus DP. Uh, and so you want to take all that good information and you want to you want to get it out, right? You want it to be usable. Um, you want it to get someplace where, where you can look at it because you're probably not going to be standing right in front of the breaker uh, wanting to make those decisions. <laughs> Okay, so with something like Modbus, we can get to that data from a remote terminal. And then once we have it, what can we do with it? Um, so you could take this data and, and you can connect it to some sort of PLC. Um, you can go to a building management software. Mm -hmm. um, Eden, Eden itself offers some good gateway products where maybe you want to put a display on the front of your, your assembly, the, the big metal enclosure that everything sits in. You want to be able to, to look at what's happening inside. We'll talk more about software later. First, something I never considered until I talked to Andy was how long does a circuit breaker last? And it turns out it's a complicated set of conditions. For example, the PXR keeps track of how long it's been in service, how many short circuit faults have occurred, whether those faults are large or small, and how often are they getting cycled. For example, is somebody using the breaker as a light switch? In the past, you might not know that a breaker was at its end of life until it fails. Which brings us to breaker health. And so what we've done is we've created this, this new feature in PXR called breaker health. And so breaker health takes all these, all this diagnostic information uh, and puts it together and spits out a, a life percentage of your breaker. So you start with 100%. Uh, and like I said, if your breaker is out there and it's not seeing a lot of events, not a lot of uh, contact use, that life is going to go down very slowly. Um, but if you see a lot of hits on your breaker, it's going to go down much more quickly. And just to be clear, all circuit breakers have a lifetime. The difference with power defense is the monitoring. So what do others do? Some other people in the industry, um, they'll, they'll rely on like operation counts. So after you see so many of operations, they may retire a breaker and replace it. Um, and so the nice thing about this is you're seeing a lot more than just operations. You're seeing real electrical events of, of what actually happened on that breaker. Yeah, I can see how knowing real Usage conditions can help with, say, like scheduled maintenance or a maintenance, maintenance schedule for how long something stays in service. Okay, I did want to make sure we come back to software because Power Defense has some cool software. So why don't you tell us about that next? Um, you can plug into any of these PXR trip units. 
just with your laptop using a, a USB to micro USB cable. And so once you're connected to your trip unit, um, you can do things like change protection settings. And I can set the, the different long delay, short delay, instantaneous pickup settings. I can configure relays of what information I want those relays to tell me. I can look at the time current curve. Okay, hold on, let me interrupt you for just a second. What is a time current curve? This is basically a graph and kind of every motor case breaker comes with one, every breaker in general comes with one. So the X axis is always the current and their Y axis is the time. So what the line on that graph represents is if my breaker sees a certain amount of current, it should trip in this amount of time. Ah, okay. And I think you can use that information when you're setting up multiple zones. That way you could have a zone closest to a load trip first. Okay, what about historic data? Is there anything that you can tell from the trip unit if it's not connected to a network or a laptop all the time? Uh, maybe my breaker tripped or it's acting funny and I want to see, hey, what's been going on with my breaker lately? I can plug in and I get uh, the last 200 events. Um, so if somebody changed the setting or it saw a certain fault event uh, or one of the features was turned on or off, um, I can see all of that. Okay, so these features are sounding really cool. Is there anything else you want us to know about the software? Um, there are a couple premium features in the software. Number one is I can pull a live waveform uh, right off of the, the trip unit. Anybody who's looking to really do some analysis on, on uh, maybe their harmonics and they wanna see the quality of the waveform, they can do that. Um, the other main feature is a, called secondary injection testing. Um, and so all of our breakers are tested when they come out of the manufacturing plant. Um, but some customers prefer they be retested in the field, maybe once they're installed into equipment. Um, and so we have a way to do that um, right through our software. You don't have to take the breaker out of the application to do that. Um, it all goes to the trip unit. And so it's a, it's a simple, easy, fast method. And once you do it, you get a really nice PDF test report uh, just through your laptop. By the way, you can download that software from Eaton's website and work on it without using one of the breakers. It has a simulation or offline mode. Well, Andy, I have learned a ton about circuit breakers, and I really appreciate your time. I also appreciate how many of my dumb questions that you answered. Thank you for coming on the show. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me. Appreciate the time. Over on the Element 14 community, there are show notes with links to stuff related to breakers and power defense. We also had a cool road test that used power defense in a unique way. So go check it out. And remember, that is the best place to ask me questions because I'm more likely to see them. And if you have questions about circuit breakers, we can get somebody like Andy to answer them. For now, it is time for me to get back to... Really? 